example two, same exact setup, but different direction. So we've determined that the, the trend appears linear. We're okay with that. And I wanna use linear regression to verify the function. Okay, so what that means is I want to find the slope and the y-intercept. You're used to in your math classes y equaling mx plus b. We're going to do something pretty similar to that. We just change the letters. Um, we call them a and b instead of m and b. Um, and I, I want to find the slope and the y-intercept. And I don't want to do it by hand. I want my calculator to figure it out. Now, this process of regression, again, I, I mentioned this in, in example one. It's a really large idea in stats. It's where we make a scatter plot. We look at the trend in the scatter plot. And for example one, we looked at it and it looked linear. So I want to put a model on that. I want to put a linear model on it. And the, that process of looking at your data, saying it looks linear, and putting a line on top of it, overlaying that line, that's called regression. All right, regression analysis. Taking past data, putting a model on top of it, and then predicting into the future. That whole process, regression. We're happening, we're doing linear regression right now. Later on, we'll do quadratic. Uh, we'll do polynomial, we'll do logarithmic, exponential, logistic, and then we'll take those models and we always predict with them. All right, so let me show you all the calculator buttons to find this linear function, and then I'll flip back to my calculator, not my calculator, I'll flip back to my handwritten notes and, and we'll interpret the slope. Okay, so I'm going to assume you have your data in there from example one, I do. If you remember, if I hit zoom nine, Right here was my stat, stat plot, and it does look linear. So I would like my calculator to do two things for me right now. I would like my calculator to find the line that best fits that data, and whatever that line is, I would like it to be plugged into Y1 so I can see that trend line appear on my graph. So not only find it, then put it on my graph for me, right? Because I'm super lazy, don't want to do anything on my own. So find me all the numbers and then drop that bad boy into Y1 so I can see it on my graph. So when I hit zoom nine next, you're gonna see a line going through here, right? The line of best fit, the linear model, or you might say the regression model. All right, so let's go to our home screen. Now, before I get going, I wanna remind you, if you didn't do this, on your first, uh, on the first example, it's going to make a difference, um, well, pretty soon. So let's, oh, not pretty soon, right now. So let's go ahead and hit mode. You need to have done two things. So if you remember from example one, you need to make sure that you are in classic mode and that your stat wizards are off, all right? If that's not happening right now, your screen will not look like the screen I'm about to go to. All right, so let me go back home, second in mode. Here we go, we're gonna hit, I'm gonna clear all this out, all right. So we have the important buttons. We're gonna hit stat. All right, we're gonna go over to calc. Now, if you take a stats class, they'll talk about one bar stats, maybe two bar, mead, mead, but don't worry about those. I want us to head down to where you start to see the word REG pop up. So just hold tight on your calculator and watch my screen for a moment. There are a bunch of regressions. There is a linear regression, a quadratic regression, a cubic, a quartic, another linear, and we'll talk about the difference between the two, a natural log, please take note, this does not say L-I-N, it says L-N, that's natural log. If you've heard of that function, great. If not, we're gonna get to it in chapter six. Um, there's an exponential, there's a power, there's a logistic, a sinusoidal, you can make your own. All right, so there are a lot of regression models inside this calculator. Like I said, it's a big idea in statistics. The two I wanna focus on for right now, and we're gonna narrow it down to one, let me scroll up till four and eight are in the same view screen. So four and eight are your calculator's two linear regressions. And we are only ever going to use eight. And I'll tell you why there's two in here. Four usually gets used in a more math class. And I know you're like, hey, I'm taking math 31, but really I'm a stats teacher, so we're in a stats class. Well, we're not, we're like in a hybrid. Anyways, so if you're in a more strictly math class, they'll tend to use AX plus B because it sounds like MX plus B. Now your calculator was just programmed to use A and B as their letters because they're the first two letters in the alphabet. Now, stats folks like A plus BX, so A represents the Y coordinate of the Y intercept and B represents the slope. And if you ever wanna have a combo about why we prefer to do it that way, 
I'm happy to. It has to do with multiple regression, and when you major in stats, it'll make even more sense. It's awesome. But we're going to use eight. All right, so I want to be super clear on that. You're going to use eight. It's not going to give you any different answers than four. It's just what they call B and four is A and eight. And what they call A and four is B and eight. So that's the only difference. All right, so we're going to go to eight. All right. And then you need to give your calculator three pieces of information. You're, you need to tell your calculator where your data is located. It needs to know where to look. Like, I need to make the line between what two sets of data. Well, you typically put your data in L1 and L2, and that's great. We just need to separate those two lists by a comma. So let's type in L1, second and the number one, and then hit the comma key, which is right above your seven key. All right, and now give it L2. All right, now sit tight. Don't follow my calculator just yet. There's one more piece of information we want to give it. I said I wanted my calculator to do two things. I wanted it to find the line, which it will, and then I wanted it to get dropped into Y1, all right? So let me go back home, and we need to tell our calculator to drop it into Y1. So hit one more comma, and now Y1, it's not obvious where it is, so go on a little calculator button journey with me. We're gonna hit bars, okay, just to the left of the clear key. Go to the right to Y bars. You will always be in function mode. Um, at the very end, we might go to polar mode. I can't remember if we do that in here or not. Or actually, we'll go into numerical mode. Um, we'll go into something else a little later. But how about whenever you're doing regression, you're always going to be in function mode. So let's hit enter. And then you can choose which Y variable do you want it to drop into. I typically pick Y1 because it's the first one there. If you're feeling a little little uh, wild on a Friday night, go ahead and drop it into Y2. Maybe go nuts, like Y7, all right? So I'm just going to hit Y1, and now I've given my calculator three pieces of information. So stat calc 8. I want my X variables in L1, my Y variables are in L2, and can you please write it into the Y1 slot? So let me hit enter, and you see this calculator screen. Now for some of you, you might not be seeing R and R squared just yet. Sit tight, we will fix that in, the, in a later example. So we're getting there. The numbers, woo, let me move this back up. The numbers that you need right now are here. You see the y-intercept is negative 912, and you see the slope is about 0.47. All right, now if I hit zoom nine, or if you hit graph, all of a sudden you see that line going through, okay? So we have found our linear model. We've verified that function. I'm gonna flip back to my paper and write up this linear model, and then we're gonna interpret the, the graph together. And then once we get done with that, I'm gonna bring you back to this screen and I'm gonna show you a different way of finding a linear model here. Um, it's just a little, little trick we do in stats. All right, with that, I'll see you in a few. Bye. Hey, hey Math31, we're back. Now I wanna just review everything we just did so that we can run through getting this line of best fit again. Now, as I put, or as I stated on the first part of this video, you have to make sure that your mode is changed back to classic. Now, when I was on my calculator on my computer, I had the option when I hit mode to scroll down. And as I told you, this calculator, this one's so old, it doesn't even have that option. But if you have the newer calculator, you have to scroll down and change your mode back to classic. And what would happen is you'd, if you have the new calculator, you'd be able to hit the down arrow key and go into the second half of this menu. And the first line will say math print classic. And you've got to make sure classic is highlighted. And you also need to make sure your stat wizards are off. And like I said, I don't even have the option on this calculator because I've had this thing for 20 years or something like that. All right, so let's go back to our home screen. And here are our calculator commands. I'm gonna hit stat calc 8 L1 comma L2 comma Y1. And then let me hit that and we see all of these numbers popping up. Now, at this point, you may or may not see R and R squared. It's fine if you don't, we're gonna address that in example three. But I do want us to take a look at these three numbers up here. So this A is your y-intercept. That will always be the y-intercept. The second number here, B, will always be your slope. And you can see in the form of y equaling A plus BX, this is your y-intercept, this is your slope. So we need to now get from our calculator screen 
to our answer on our paper. So I'm gonna copy the first three lines of this down on my paper. And then we're gonna talk about how we can move from our calculator screen to an answer that's acceptable on a test. Oh, four, six, nine, excuse me. Okay, so there were the first three lines off of my calculator screen. So from here, what I want you to do is instead of writing y equaling a plus bx, write your particular numbers. a was negative 912 and b was 0.469. And you don't have to go three decimal accurate. I just feel like doing it today. So we will say y is equal to negative 912.665 plus 0.469 x. So you see I took that top line there and I swapped out my a value for this problem and then my b value from this problem. Because when you run stat calc 8, this number here will always be your y-intercept or at least the y-coordinate of your y-intercept and this number here will always be your slope. That's how stat calc 8 is set up to run. Okay, so with that this is almost midterm acceptable but I want you to go one step further and remember that we know function notation. So we're actually going to say f of x is equal to negative 912.665 plus 0.469x. That is my linear model. All right, that's the whole, the whole, not quite the end game, but pretty close to the end game. So this is our linear model. All right, it's sometimes referred to as a regression model. You might hear it referred to as a predicting line. Maybe you'll hear it predicting model. There are a whole bunch of different vocab words that mean the same thing for this, this linear model. All right, so we've got our linear model. All right, because I put that Y1 on the last calculator command, because I dropped that here, you'll see it's popped into Y1. And if you're not sure what I'm referring to, let me just clear this out. And let me rerun this command without doing y1. So if I do stat calc 8 l1 comma l2, so notice there's no y1 here. If I hit enter, this screen looks the same, but do you see how y1 is blank, right? And, and then my scatter plot doesn't have the line on it. But if I run this command stat calc 8 l1 l2 y1, right? This screen still looks the same, but now it's been dropped into y1. And let's say you didn't want to do it into Y1, right? Let's say you did stat calc 8, L1, L2. All right, let's try Y4 just to be different. Calculator looks the same. If I hit graph, you see the line going through it looks the same. But if you go back to Y equals, you'll see it's now dropped into Y4. And it doesn't matter which one you drop it into. You have 10 options, all right? So your calculator, it's capable of graphing three plots and 10 functions. Okay. All right, so we're not quite done with this problem. We're still being asked to interpret the slope. So the slope is always this point four or the, the letter B. So let me scooch this up and let's practice interpreting the slope here. All right, so my slope in this case is going to be 0.469. All right, which I could write as 0.469 over 1 if you want to make it a unit ratio. Now, these are always change in y over change in x. The units in y's, right, it's good to do a unit analysis. This was percent and this was year, right? So I can see that for every one year increase, right, so for every year, what was the percent of persons 25 years or older who got college degrees? Well, that was increasing because this is positive by 0.469%, all right? So for every one year that passes, for each additional year, all right, the average, and I'll say increase, because our slope is positive, so the average increase in the percentage of persons 
25 years or older. Who are college graduates. Um, is 0.469%. All right, so we have, like always, for every one unit increase in X, there's an average either increase or decrease in Y of blank units, right? So in this case, it was 0.469, and the units were percentages. All right, so make sure you know how to interpret a slope. We've talked about it before, but a template for interpreting the slope. So for each one unit increase, in X, the predicted, oops, sorry, I should say the average increase or decrease, you'll have to decide depending on whether the slope is positive or negative, in Y is blank units. And that's what we had here. So for every one year increase, the average increase in Persons of 25 years or older who are college graduates is 0.469%. Okay? All right. Now, with all that, I want to show you a little tweak that we can do in stats, a little workaround. I'm going to establish it here, and then we're going to, I'm going to flip back to my computer and really work on it there. And so let me show you. Let me scroll this back down and show you what we tend to do in stats to avoid having really large numbers. So when I say avoid having really large numbers, that y-intercept is pretty large. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little, little side note in here and talk about base years. All right, so when you get really large numbers like so, right, because our, look at our, our years. I get that 1998 might seem like not too long ago, but as a number, 1998 is pretty large. 2000 is pretty large, right? We're, four, five, six, seven are not that large. So what we wanna do, or what we tend to do in stats is we don't wanna deal with numbers that are this large, like that's pretty huge. So we'll establish something called a base year. So you'll hear me talk about a base year. Sometimes I'll give you one, sometimes you can pick one on your own. And so for now, let's just pick one on our own. We wanna reset these years to just represent, be represented by smaller numbers. So for example, I'm gonna pick my base year to be 1990. And you do not have to pick 1990. You could literally pick any year. You could pick 1900, you could pick 2000, you could pick 1998, but I'm gonna go with 1990. So what that means is if you set your base year to be 1990, that will imply X equals zero in the year 1990. And that would mean if you were in the year 1991, X would equal one, because you were one year after 1990. All right, so if I was 1992, x would be equal to 2. And I want you to imagine if we were in 1998, right, x would be equal to 8. So instead of putting the number 1998 into L1, I'm going to put 8. Instead of putting 2000, I'm going to put 10. Instead of putting 2002, I'm going to put 12. Right? And I'm going to continue this trend, <clears throat> and this would be 2016, that would be what, 26 years? after, <clears throat> excuse me, after 1990. And if I wasn't sure, you can always take your current year and subtract out your base year and find out that you were 26 years past 1990. So you can always establish it that way, or at least what your X value is. Current year minus base year, boom, there you go. All right, so with that, I'm gonna flip back to my computer and we're gonna run regression off of these base years, all right, so the smaller numbers. And at the end of all of this, you're gonna see most of this screen stays the same. And when I say most of this screen, I mean most of this screen will stay the same. These three numbers will stay the same. It's just our y intercept is gonna be a much smaller, much more manageable number. So all right, I'm gonna flip back to my computer and we're gonna work on that. I'll see you in a few, bye. Hey Matt 31, we're back. I just wanna run this regression using my base year of 1990. So uh, if we go into stat and edit, here's my original data, right? L1 and L2, but I also, just so we could work it again with the base year, I put the base year of 19, 
uh, 90, right, that data into L3, and then I just retyped in um, L4. Now you don't have to do all of this, I just want you to see it happen. Now keep in mind, with my base year data, that's an L3 and L4, not L1 and L2. If I go back to my home screen, and let's rerun regression, okay? I'm gonna hit stat, I'm gonna go to calc, I'm gonna hit option eight, and we're gonna go L1, oops, just kidding, I just said it, it's L3, comma, L4, okay? and then let's hit comma, and then I'm gonna do Y1, so we're gonna hit bars, we're gonna go to Y variables, and then basically I hit enter three times, enter, 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 and then you can see when I crunch this, my slope stayed the same, right? It's still about 0.47, but look at that y-intercept. It's so much smaller, and that's just a nicer number to have to deal with. Now, if I want my graph to match my data, I'd also have to swap out L1 and L2 here. So I could go back into my stat plot with second and y equals, and I can go down and adjust the lists. So I can make them L3 and L4. And now when I hit zoom nine, I'm gonna see basically the same graph with just a different line, right? My y equals, uh, my y1 is that linear model, but the y-intercept is a lot nicer. It's just about 21 instead of negative 913, or technically negative 912.665. All right, before we get out of here, I do wanna show you a couple of errors that I've seen happen. So let me give you a for instance. I want you to see what would happen. Let me clear out L4 right now. I want, to, I want you to see what happens if I try and hit zoom 9. So keep in mind, I'm asking my calculator to plot L3 against L4, and I just cleared L4 out. There's nothing in there. When I hit zoom 9, this is a very common error. Invalid dim. Invalid dimension. When you see that, something is happening to your lists. Something specifically is happening to your lists when you're trying to graph them. So when I hit second and y equals, oops, excuse me, let me hit quit first. Second and y equals, that's when I would notice, uh-oh, there's something going on, something's wrong with either L3 or L4 because that's the only plot that's on and those are the lists that are referenced. And when I hit stat and enter, see, oh, well, L3's live, but L4 isn't. So that's, that's the problem. All right, so let me go change these back to L1 and L2 for a moment. And I wanna show you another common error. All right, let me adjust my stat list. And let's say, oops, let's say, for example, let me go back to L1 and L2. Let's say you forgot to enter this data value. So I want you to see that there are only nine data values in L2, but there are 10 data values in L1. So I want you to hear 10 entries in L1, nine in L2, they don't match. So let me go home. All right, and now let me hit stat, calc 8, L1, comma, L2. Again, keeping in mind those lists don't match, comma, or at least the size of those lists don't match. And then we'll go into Y1. And then you hear my calculator say, this time my dimensions are mismatched, not invalid dimension. They both have the dimension in it, meaning they're referring to a list. But this is saying the dimensions themselves are mismatched. When it says invalid dim, you're referencing a list that doesn't exist. But when the dimensions mismatch, it means they have a different number of, of um, cells in them, different number of data values. So if I go to it, they're saying, hey, something's wrong with L1 and L2. I hit stat and enter, and I'm like, well, those look OK so far. Let me see the bottom of the list. Ah, there's the problem. These dimensions were mismatched. All right, so those are very common errors I want you to be on the lookout for. So with that, we're gonna go pick up the correlation coefficient, and that's when we'll start to worry about our diagnostics. And what I mean there is when I hit this, some of you are seeing R and R squared, some of you aren't. We're gonna adjust that. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye.